Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron. With me here today again is Jamie. Hey, folks. Today, we're going to be talking about the primaries for our ODST costumes. If you watched our video on our secondaries on the suppressed SMG and the SOCOM pistol, today we're going to be working on our primaries, the M45 shotgun and the battle rifle. Yeah, these are the heavy hitters. These are the main weapons of our personal arsenal. Probably the most impressive pieces of the kit. And we're really looking forward to showing these two off. Oh yeah, these are the weapons that we're probably going to be carrying in our hands at all times. And, you know, they're the real showstoppers for this. We're going to be talking about how we printed them off, how we finished them, how we paint them. And hopefully that puts you guys in a good position to complete your own primaries. So with all that said, let's get right into it. So both of these primaries were printed on our Bamboo X1 Carbon. And we're absolutely loving this printer because we get such great prints right out of the gate. And you can see on these time lapses that these prints are coming out absolutely incredibly right from the start. It, it's like magic. Having an excellent 3D print right out of the gate is going to save you a lot of time during the sanding, smoothing, and finishing process. So it's very important that you get a good print out, and that's going to really set you up for success down the road. Now, Jamie, what's the first step of our smoothing and sanding process for these amazing prints? Well, it's really easy for these prints because usually the first thing you have to do is immediately hit the prints with some filler primer. We just have some Rust-Oleum filler primer here and we just do a nice thick coat across the entire surface. Probably the hardest thing that you can do is just have patience because you need to let this perfectly cure till the point that it is able to be sanded. And how long does that usually take? We like to leave it around 24 hours, just overnight to get a good cure. And in that time, you can even start the process of filling any of the more difficult parts because it's nearly impossible for a printer to get flawless prints. There are going to be some areas that touch supports. Yeah, you can never get as good of a surface if it's touching supports compared to if it's just, you know, on top of the model. There's going to be a little bit more uncertainty at those parts. And so we're just going to be using the good old Bondo glazing and spot putty to touch those places up. Yeah, and just one layer should really do it. These support areas are a lot better than our usual printers like the uh, Creality CR10. So one layer of Bondo, just hit that with a 200 grit sand and then you should be ready to go for the next part. Yeah, usually it takes us a couple days to get to this point, but with the bamboo prints we got here in what? a day or two yeah including the wet time for this to dry yeah one day yeah and we're already wet sanding now this wet sand is going to give a super smooth finish it really turns the surface of the print from like a paper texture to pretty much a glass like smoothness yeah it'll just even out that texture across the whole thing and with just a 400 grit wet sand the entire print's perfect at that point all we want to do is just hit that with one final coat of filler primer just for any last remaining surface imperfections and you're done that is a finished post-processed print at that point Try to say that three times quicker. Yeah, and this works for both the shotgun and the battle rifle, right? Like we use the same techniques for both basically. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we just used mostly bamboo parts. And then for any specific little greeblies that are high detail that have say some interesting knurling or something on it. And we just printed those on the Elegoo Saturn. I believe like the flashlight on the shotgun is a piece like that. Yeah, exactly right. And just some of those end caps on the shotgun and part of the scope on the battle rifle, just those parts that may have a little bit more detail. So now that we have our parts all smooth, we're ready to start painting on these. It happened very quickly. We called the shotgun like an exercise in grays because there's like three or four different shades of gray <laughs> on this thing that we saw. The three color choices we're going to be using are satin charcoal, a flat gray primer, and our classic Rust-Oleum filler primer. Yeah, these three just go from dark medium to really nice and light, which seemed to be a perfect match to all the references. Yeah, I remember laying the shotgun out, comparing it to the reference on the computer and just kind of picking out what part would be what shade of gray and going off to paint them and as soon as we have just one you know or two coats of those colors done we're ready to go we're ready to fully assemble this print using some pvc pipe to hold everything together I tried to model it to have like internal support rods but the shotgun front has like three barrels coming out of it and so i wanted to kind of use the same rod size for each one and so I settled on three quarter inch pvc which actually has an outer diameter of just over one inch so those pvc pipes they're very cheap to get 
but also very strong. We cut them using some PVC cutters and they slide right through the entire length of the shotgun. And all of those end caps are able to just fit right into the end. You actually size them so they fit the internal diameter, right? That's right. They're just basically plugs that fit right into the end of the PVC. Oh, it's a, it's a fantastic design and it really makes this thing so much stronger and just easier to put together. And that will just cap off the entire print. And the PVC as a bonus is very light. You know, a one inch thick wooden rod, three of them throughout the whole gun would be pretty sizable, yeah. pretty hefty, and you would not want to have to carry around all that extra weight during convention. Especially with a shotgun that is this bloody big. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is a big boy. Yeah, so moving over to the battle rifle now, what was the painting on that one like, Jamie? So it was a lot of just standard flat grays just across the main body. The only real difference laid in these sort of detail pieces that you see in the paint booth here. These were just a classic gunmetal gray. Now, there's no gunmetal gray that's better in my mind than the one that people use for Warhammer for making miniatures. Those guys do know their paints, I'll say. And so we use the Citadel Lead Belcher paint that really has the best non-sparkly gunmetal finish, which seems to be the hardest thing to find. Yeah, there are a, definitely a lot of gunmetals with just a whole bunch of glitter in it. I'm not really a fan, how about you? Yeah, definitely not. It doesn't look like gunmetal, it just looks like dark sparkles. And so you'll see that some pieces we just finished off with a little bit of black, and that's it. That is another primary weapon ready to be assembled. Now this one is a lot skinnier, so we just use some small wooden dowels to go through the body of it. That's right, it has a much smaller barrel profile compared to the shotgun. You also added kind of a little plug into the tip of the barrel, right? It has those three prongs at the front, would be pretty prone to breaking but with that little plug in there that kind of helps reinforce and unify all three to prevent them from snapping so easily yeah well remembered that was exactly it i just cut a little like two centimeter long piece of rod and just plugged that right in between it just made sure that whether it's in transit or whether i'm it's me running around the workshop holding this thing it's not going to snap one thing i did want to bring up that we did not consider and ended up costing us a little bit of time was that these guns are quite long especially the shotgun. It is quite unwieldy and we're gonna have to be able to travel with these things. So a mistake that we made was actually gluing it all together as a single piece. Later on we had to actually like break the shotgun in half along the part separations and cut one of the PVC pipes inside so that we could actually, you know, fold it in half or have the shotgun in two main pieces that could actually fit inside of a suitcase or something similar like that. Yeah, we luckily learned our lesson in that regard because the battle rifle here is able to be split just along the back and then that dual barrel at the front is able to be pulled directly off as well. Both of those are just friction fitted and they are ready to go for travel. So keep that in mind as you're making these props. If they are really, really big and you want to travel with them, make sure that they can break down into travel size. So now that we've got these two primaries assembled and the first colors on them, we need to do a little bit of weathering. And in my opinion, the weathering is what makes or breaks this whole build. It really helps unify everything together. Right now, the weapons look a little bit cartoony. Plasticky, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. And this weathering process we're gonna do on both of them is really going to help bring them into the real world. So my goal when weathering these were to try and imagine as if I reached into the screen and just pulled the weapon right out of the game. Starting with the shotgun, I noticed in the art that the colors were pretty distressed. They were a little bit dulled down, a little bit multi-toned, and slightly imperfect. Now that might be because this shotgun is from Halo Reach, mm -hmm. and so it's got its own maybe a little bit gritty aesthetic. And so I actually ended up using an oil wash on this. Now typically we wouldn't do an oil wash on oil-based paints like the Rust-Oleum brand. What made you do something different this time? You're exactly right. The mineral spirits that we use to mix into an oil paint, that would actually often semi-strip the paint. Mm -hmm. But if you act fast, you can actually provide a nice mottled and faded texture to the surface. You can actually add natural imperfections when you are wiping away those mineral spirits. If you act quick and don't allow it to really soak in and actually strip the paint, you can add some real interesting and quite realistic surface imperfections to this entire piece. I really like that. It's taking something normally we'd want to avoid and normally would be a mistake and making that kind of work for us in this moment. Yeah, it's knowing when to use the techniques. Looking at all the references for this, I was almost tempted just to sponge on different colors onto the surface, mm. but that's not random enough. It's too designed, it's too artificial. And so by just wiping away mineral spirits and where the mineral spirits has seeped in a little bit more here and a little 
little bit less there, it creates that natural surface imperfection and that grime and dirt into the surface that you can't really recreate just with your hands and your best laid plans. That's exactly right. And I think the oil wash on this was a really good call. The shotgun looks amazing. But you didn't do an oil wash for the battle rifle. Because this battle rifle is from Halo 3, it's a little bit less grimy. It's a little bit less edgy. Maybe they didn't have the processing power to uh, render all that dirt and grime. <laughs> And so we just use the classic method of the black acrylic wash. This allows you to seep into those edges, just discolor the, the metals, the blacks, the grays, and just create a little bit of surface variation. I didn't need anything quite as drastic as the shotgun, which just looks like a load of plasticky grays. This battle rifle already has metallics on it, so it didn't need anywhere near as drastic of a weathering. But as we know, neither of these weapons are plastic. They are meant to be some machine stamped metal and so we want to add a little bit of that metallic back to the surface that's exactly right and how are you going to do that so we want to use a process of dry brushing that is just loading up a paintbrush with in this case a nice metallic an actual lead belcher hand acrylic paint using a makeup brush it allows us to just hit those edges and add a little bit of surface tone change, especially on those sharp edges. It really helps contrast against the black recesses that the oil wash gave you. Yeah, well noticed. That causes the illusion that this weapon is in fact made out of metal, especially when it's hitting the light on different surfaces. The areas that would actually degrade faster are those sharpest edges, because that's where the paint is thinnest. So when you add that metal to these surfaces, your eye is almost tricked to think that the rest of the body is in fact that see a metal. Mm -hmm. You did a bit of airbrushing on the battle rifle as well, right? Oh, I could never resist a little bit of airbrushing. <laughs> you do love your airbrush. And that's just adding to the effect of wear, tear, a little bit of surface change and variation that just captures your eye, especially on those exhausts, vents. I, I'm sure there's a word in the gun community you know, for it. It's 25, the 2550s. Guns could work way different <laughs> and so i just added a little bit of almost like an exhaust effect from this weapon being well used all in all it's just to create some surface variation and just some visual interest to the whole thing the shotgun received a large amount of the same treatment in that regard both dry brushing airbrushing into some of the recesses and then finally adding a little bit of oil paint into some of the sharp edges, the recesses, the panel lines, just to create some grime, some wear and tear, and some real world looking usage to the whole thing. That's absolutely right. And you did one more thing for me on the shotgun. Normally, there is a yellow band across the midsection, but we're all for style points here. And uh, yeah, you asked me if I wanted to make that band blue instead to match the color scheme of my armor. I said yes. You applied it very lovely. It looks like you did some liquid latexing and then painting using the signal blue from Montana Gold on top of it. And you can peel that liquid latex off, giving it the chipped paint effect. Yeah, it was something that was added at the end. Um, we wanted to make sure that it match the rest of the effect we didn't want it to stand out too much but still you know be kind of striking and unique yeah i was very happy with how it came out i think it's going to match the armor and just you know complete the whole set very nicely but now that we've got both primaries painted we need to do a little bit of protection for them we want to protect those with I believe it's a satin clear coat right yes yeah, satin or matte are all fine in this circumstance you definitely don't want a glossy weapon but you know just a nice wet coat over this entire thing because this will be lugged around it'll be bumping off of your armor you'll be rubbing away the paint with your hands you want to make sure that there's a nice protective layer over this piece and that goes for a lot of these blasters or props or you know guns that you're going to be carrying around a lot that will get handled a lot more than just your armor these parts will get worn away so you want to make sure that you protect it with as good of a clear coat as possible. I find especially if there's an oil wash on there, oil paint will want to stick to the oil in your hands and it'll come off, I don't want to say easily, but it gives it a different texture to it. And you have similar problems with acrylic washes. They're water-based, so water will begin to wash them away. Yeah, the sweat of your hands will do exactly that. And this way, everything is just sealed in and all of your hard work will stay there. And it will actually do a lot to mellow some of those tones and bring them all in together and make them all uniform. Because you need to think that all of these paints that you're using will have a different surface finish. 
So if you're providing mm -hmm. a new surface finish that is uniform across the whole piece, everything will just finally be drawn together in the one coherent finish. That's very true. Well, Jamie, we've got these two primaries locked, loaded, and completed. I'm very excited to add these to our kit. I'll probably want to add like a sling or something to the shotgun, but that's way down the line when we actually have our armor and we do some, you know, test fits with it all on. But I'm very pleased with how these came out. I think your combination of the battle rifle and the SMG is very medium to long range, whereas uh, my shotgun and the SOCOM are a bit more close to medium range. And I think they suit our concepts very well. Yeah, when we had these primaries in mind and when we actually finally made them, we had a better idea of how we wanted to make our armor more matching for our characters in mind. Mm -hmm. These weapons really solidified that and inspired us to make changes to the armor, which you'll see in later videos. Yeah, you know, the primary weapon can really dictate a lot of what the armor looks like and is something very important to consider when you're you know designing your own concept for an odst well guys i hope you enjoyed the video we honestly can't talk well enough about these bamboo printers we're hoping and praying that they release a larger version so that we can just get like 10 or 20 of them and just use them forever basically 3d printing has advanced so much in the last five years it's making our jobs a lot easier which means that we can make a lot more cool stuff so thank you all for watching we've got a lot more tutorial videos on the armor itself coming up as well as just about every other part of this kit stay tuned we hope to see you in the next video